Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another ship fitting guide for Eve Echoes. Now, the more astute amongst you are probably going, hang on a second, Benzi, that's a rock. You've already done a rock, literally, earlier this week. Why are we getting two ship fitting guides in the same week for one ship? Well, first of all, congratulations on being one of the few people out there that seem to actually be getting the notifications when a new video goes live. YouTube is being atrocious recently, and I keep getting DMs from people saying, hey, when, you know, are you still putting videos out daily? What's going on? Yes, I put a video out every day, Monday to Friday, at 1700 UTC. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you tap the notification bell, and set it to all notifications. But for some reason, YouTube still does not not think that's enough. The very best way to make sure that you never miss a video is to join my Discord. The link is in the description down below, and there's a channel there called Captain's Content. You can right-click on that, and then select that to give you notifications. That way, whenever a video goes live, you will get a notification on your phone or your computer or whatever, letting you know exactly that. That's probably the best way to do it for now. Anyway, all that said and done, why on earth are we looking at the rock again? Well, because after I put the video out, apparently people took umbrage at the supposedly controversial statement that the rock is not as good at brawling as the Hyperion, and so I kind of felt the need to validate what I was saying there. Now, to be clear, I didn't say that the rock couldn't brawl. I just said that the Hyperion is a better brawler than the rock is, just as the rock is a better sniper than the Hyperion. Now, of course, this is a sort of continuation of that previous video, so if you haven't watched it, I do strongly recommend you head across to that video. I'll put a link in the description and on screen now, assuming I remember. I'm notoriously bad for that. Anyway, with all that said and done then, let's jump straight into the fitting for this, and then we'll showcase it in action and talk about how this actually works. Now, before I go any further on this, I need to make it abundantly clear before people start coming into the comment section and telling me I'm doing it wrong, I'm doing it wrong. I have run Bad Hair Day three times today using different fits on the rock, and ultimately, this is the one that I have now settled on, and I'll explain why. You can disagree with me all you like, and that's fine. This may not be the perfect fit for you, your skills, and what you're going up against, but there is a reason that the fit is like this. Now, because we're going for a brawling fit, we've gone for core C-type large snub-nosed railguns. Of course, we want snub-nosed for this because we're going to be going for that extra DPS, but at the shorter range. Now, you can see that even with the rocks bonus here, that 12.5% per level of advanced large railgun operation, you get that additional large railgun optimal range there. That still only gives us an optimal range of 14.63 kilometers. This is not a great optimal range, and the accuracy falloff is fairly short and short as well at 13.5, meaning you are 100% effective at the 14.63, and that's dropped down to 50% effectiveness by the time you've, well, not even hit 30 kilometers. So if you're 30 kilometers away from a target, you're only doing theoretically 50% of your possible output. You then have a maximum range of about 42, 41 kilometers. It's not long at all for a battleship, especially one like the Rock that has incredibly slow movement speed and a very ponderous agility rating. But but it is what it is. Optimal range there, 14.63, accuracy fall off of 13.5, and a tracking speed that almost reaches medium turrets of 8.86. This is why I don't think the Rock is as good at brawling as the Hyperion. The Hyperion gets direct bonuses to how those snub-nosed railguns work, plus it's that little bit faster, that little bit more agile. But again, we're going to showcase this in action. I'm not saying that the Rock cannot brawl. For our mid slots, if we're going to be up close and personal, then a Vrykolakis Large Energy Nosferatu, of course, takes up one of our mid slots. Optimal range of 24 kilometers, we should be in that at all times. I will probably do a blood bag sort of situation where we orbit the last ship that you want to destroy, um, and you just hit the Nosferatu on that to keep draining its capacitor um, throughout the entire fight, and then you just blap everything else. Um, that's just to help keep us a bit more capacitor stable, because of course this is going to be heavy shield tanking going on here, and we've got three Predator Stasis Weber Fires. Basically, if you want to be able to hit any of the smaller, faster ships in the game, things like Interceptors and the Exploration Frigates, um, especially in like the Tier 10 missions and encounters, you're going to need three Predator Stasis Weber Fires. Again, this is another massive advantage that the Hyperion has. The Hyperion 
can use the Serpentis uh, nano cores, which have bonuses to web strength, meaning you don't have to fit three of them. For everything else that brawls, you need three of these. You can't go for two and a target painter, that won't cut it. You can't go just for two of these and hopes and good wishes, that won't cut it either. You need three webifiers if you're going to hit anything. Two drones, Kaldari Navy Vespa, again, as we saw in the previous video, it's just because they're the Kaldari ones. Whichever medium drones you fancy going on in there, up to you. I've then gone for a large shield booster, a Pith C type in this case. That, of course, is the best shield booster that we can cram into this. I've only gone for one, because trying to have two shield boosters running at once, this ship just, there's nothing you can really do with that. You need like three capacitor batteries, and it just, it chews it. It really doesn't work. We want to stay as close to capacitor stability as possible in PvE because, well, capacitor is life. Um, and in PvE, it's all about that sustained damage. It's not burst damage. Burst damage is PvP. Sustained damage is what you need for PvE. I've then gone for two Pith C-type adaptive invulnerability fields, and you're going to be sitting there thinking, hang on a second, Benzi, why aren't you putting on three? Or why don't you have an adaptive, uh, the reactive hardener on there, so two reds and a yellow? Well, because I'm going up against Bad Hair Day, a lot of the rats are using missiles, and missiles pretty much negate the purpose of a reactive hardener because they do equal spread of damage, and so they just keep resetting your reactive hardener. And with two adaptive invulnerability fields, we're already pretty good on our resistances. Remember, of course, the rock does get a bonus of 4% shield resistance per level of advanced battleship command, so it's got 20% shield resistance right out the gate, you can see there. This actually works really nicely for it, it means we don't need to worry too much about a third slot here. You can put a third one on, and you'll see later that I take a bit more damage than I'd like, but the third one didn't really stop that. I did a run where I had three adaptives here instead of the magnetic field stabilizer, and those three adaptives, I was still taking the same amount of damage. In fact, I found that by swapping to the magnetic field stabilizer here, the fact that it increases my DPS and allows me to sort of shoot that little bit faster and hit it a bit a little bit harder actually helped me clear targets that I needed cleared quicker which meant I took less damage overall the one where I had three ad adaptive invulnerability fields running on this ship I hit about five percent shield whereas you'll see later I don't get quite that low with this fit the magnetic field stabilizer of course it is just there for that extra damage you can sit there and go well survivability is the most important thing and I do agree but sometimes killing an opponent quickly is the best form of survivability Again, because we need capacitor stability here, a GIST C-type large capacitor battery is pretty much a necessity. The passive bonuses that this gets does actually push us into capacitor stability. It's not very stable, but it is stable. And of course, you can then activate it as well to get that extra boost of capacitor juice to sort of refill your natural capacitor underneath it. Finally, propulsion modifier here. I've gone for core C type large afterburner. You could go for a micro warp drive, but honestly, that 25% off the top of your capacitor really hurts, means you go ridiculously unstable, even without the micro warp drive running. Um, I found that that lost just capacitor way too fast. The large afterburner is more than enough. Yes, it takes longer to loot at the end, but hey, it allows you to maneuver and try and keep into that optimal range as best as possible. That's the theory we're going going for here. Now, of course, I'm using the same nano core that we had before. This is the Rock Kaldari NCO core, 16.8% railgun damage. You can see I've done nothing else with it. Nice and easy core to get, just to showcase. And the rigs haven't really changed either. We've still got the capacitor control circuit and semiconductor memory cell for additional juice stability and a targeting system subcontroller just to lock on that little bit faster. And oh, it's about to have a thunderstorm here. Yay. Moving on to the combat rigs then, Railgun Collision Accelerator 3 and a Railgun Burst Aerator 3. Yes, I corrected it to a Burst Aerator 3 for these tests, just to make sure that everything was okay there. And I've still kept the Core Defense Capacitor Safeguard. That kind of worked better. I did one test where I swapped that for um, a bigger shield boost amount. Um, it helped for a while, but it took me out of capacitor stability, which I didn't really like. It's crazy that a Kaldari ship needs to have a battery, a Nosferatu, and a capacitor stability rig, in addition to the capacitor control circuit and the semiconductor memory cell, in order to actually keep capacitor stability. These are the this is the faction that's notorious for its stable capacitors, fast recharge times and things like that. Maybe the rock needs a slight buff to its capacitor in the April balance patch? I don't know. 
let me know your thoughts in the uh, comment section down below. Otherwise, let's jump in and have a look at this thing in action. And here we are in Bad Hair Day again, the fourth time this week that I've been running it. Goodness knows how those people who used to do it all day every day used to do it. I'm already bored of this blasted encounter, but hey, there we are. Fourth wave of the first section, same bit I showcased in the last video. Now you see my capacitor is already a lot lower than it was in the sniping build, that's to be expected. And my damage is going down a lot faster, that's with two red um, adaptive invulnerability fields going at the same time. Now I'm looking on here, and the first thing I want to do is try and take out some of these elites. So I start with that elite pithy heron because it's a small ship that's hard to hit, and you'll see that I just can't hit it. The second it goes out of 15 kilometers, I lose my ability to webify it, and just well, it it doesn't go down. It just refute. I can't hit the darn thing. So what I have to do is swap target onto here, a Pithy Heron again, or a Manticore, I can't tell because I've got that wonderful bug where the names change. It's a Manticore 3, it is an elite uh, Pithy Manticore 3. Um, I'm shooting through to that. That is webbed because it's within seven kilometers um, and it's going down nice and quickly. There we are. Now the Elite Pithy uh, Heron has come back into range as well. This means I can now swap onto that, webify it, and hopefully kill it before it moves out of webify range again. You'll also notice that I'm currently orbiting a rock. I think it's the Elite Pithy Rock that I'm orbiting. Yes, it is there, of course. Orbiting Elite Pithy Rock, 15 kilometers, and I've got the Nosferatu running on that, so I'm constantly draining energy from the rock. The aim here for me is that basically I want to try and get rid of these small, difficult to kill things first. And between my medium drones, the large snub nose railguns, and three Weber fires, we can just about do it. But you see, there's a lot of misses, a lot of grazes, which you just don't get with the sniping. So you can sit there and say, well, okay, yeah, you take down the battleships and that a lot faster. Um, but you kind of really struggle on the small ships, whereas the small ships were going down in one or two hits with the sniping build. I'm also taking a lot more damage because I'm in range of every single gun in this fleet. Um, the thing I should have done at this point is had a look and seen that that elite pithy rock is what's doing most damage, and that's probably what I should be taking out first. But you can just see that whilst I am surviving in this, and here's me actually checking now to see what is uh, hitting me with the scram, and what ships I have available, um, the amount of damage I'm taking isn't insurmountable. I don't die in this, I do successfully get through it, but compare this to the Hyperion video, which just, that, that ship, okay, I lost my shields quickly, of course I did, but that's kind of the point, you're armor tanking. Here, my shield tank is struggling. I'm down to 33-35% here. I'm losing capacitor, dropping down to 72%. I keep having to use the capacitor battery at every possibility because I'm getting drained whilst I'm also having to use heavy shield tanking and things like that. You can turn the afterburner off. It doesn't make much of a difference to your capacitor and it doesn't really change the damage all that much. It does reduce damage slightly by giving you some angular velocity to work with. Um, I keep it running because if I need to switch between targets, um, then I need to to get within that 15 kilometer optimal range as quickly as possible. But again, you can see the shield right down at 32% now. It doesn't drop as low as it did with some of the other tests, but again, it does feel a little bit like, oh, I need to kill some things. I'm just taking too much damage here. And you'll see that, yeah, that elite pithy rock is going down quite quickly. 6,400, 6,400 again, 6,500 damage per shot there. That's uh, what, 13,000 in total? 13,000 per cycle of my Snubnose, which is a good whack of damage. 10,000 there, um, just to help take things down nice and quickly, because a key part of survivability is killing your opponent before you do. You're not always going to be able to tank every amount of damage that comes through, but if you can survive long enough with an active tank in order to reduce the damage below your heal per second, then, well, you start healing again. Basically, you need to have a high enough heal per second cycle um, that you can stay alive long enough and a good enough DPS that you can reduce their damage per second total to below your heal per second. That way you just stay alive. That's the aim, ultimately, in PvE tanking, in sustained combat tanking. You have a certain amount of heals per second. Your opponent's fleet has so much DPS. The higher your heals per second, the longer it's going to take them to whittle your health down. And if you can get them below your heals per second, and, well, then you become infinitely powerful as long as you've got a capacitor. Again, capacitor is life. 
We're now at the point where things have just about stabilized. We are still cap stable, um, despite the Nosferatu now there still on us, um, as long as I'm using the battery and as long as I stay in range of the rock that I've now uh, used as a blood bag with my Nosferatu. I'm sitting at about 30 to 35% on the shields. The capacitor battery is fairly stable in sort of the high 60s. Um, it's about holding, and this is sort of the turning point in this fight for this ship. Um, we're going to have that situation now where the incoming damage is being reduced below my heals per second, so I'm going to start actually recovering my shields. There we are up to 35%, back down to 34 and it will start coming up from here. So this is the evidence that, yeah, you can do this. It's just a lot more intensive than the sniping build on the rock. You take a lot more damage. The increased DPS is really nice on the battleships, but on the smaller ships, it does struggle to hit, even with three webs, because the second they move to the 15 kilometer mark or higher, they're out of your web range and you just can't hit them. It's really infuriating that so many mobs in this will orbit at sort of 17 kilometers, but hey, there we go. That's part and parcel of it. The Hyperion, I just found its active tank felt a bit more stable. I found that the, its damage application felt a bit more reliable. The rock absolutely can brawl. I just maintain my stance. It doesn't brawl as well as the Hyperion. And ultimately, I think that the sniping fit for the rock is the way to go. If you want to brawl with railguns, go for the Hyperion. Unless you really, really are averse to armor tanking, then know that you can do it in the rock. Just it's going to be quite intensive. You're going to have to keep an eye on your screen. You're going to have to keep activating and deactivating modules. Um, and just making sure that you're doing what you're doing. I mean, of course, you shouldn't abandon your phone in the middle of a blasted storyline mission anyway. That's how people lose their ships. But there you go. Anyway, folks, the big question here is how quickly does this beat it compared to the sniping fit? Ultimately, this first section with the sniping fit came to about, I think it was 38 minutes in total, whereas this came to about 34 minutes. So there's literally like four or five minutes in it. I still just maintain that the sniping fit for the rock is absolutely the way to go. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for watching this run right the way through to the end. Thank you for all the support you give me on all of my videos. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.